Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you for being here. So um, this is officially a corporate presentation, which it is not going to be for more than five minutes. You over there, you already know this presentation. It's the same one I did uh, at the uh, uh, OpenStack meetup uh, a couple of months ago. So I'm, uh, I'm afraid you'll be bored, but. <laughs> Anyway, so today, uh, after a short introduction, I'll dive slightly into the best practice that we've developed for delivering clouds at Innovance, which tends to apply common sense and, um, so that we can deliver and maintain a working cloud for people. So who am I? Um, I'm Nick Barset. I'm 46 years old. Uh, I'm single. No, it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> <You're> not. <laughs> <laughs> I've been working on OpenStack for quite a bit. Um, currently, I'm working as uh, VP of products and pre-sales at Innovance. Um, I happen to uh, uh, work on OpenStack Telemetry, also known as uh, Silometer. Uh, founded uh, the project together with a few other people. I've been traveling the world and enjoying myself talking and uh, doing OpenStack in many ways. And if you want to complain about my bad French accent on Twitter, it's at Nijaba. All the details are over there. Who is Innovance? And that's a corporate presentation slide. So Innovance is a French company started in 2008. Um, been growing like crazy since it started doing OpenStack. When I joined Innovance, uh, that was a year and a half ago, we were about 20 people. We are now 120. This is outdated. We've got uh, 150 uh, plus customers. Um, we make quite a bit of revenue, hopefully. Otherwise, we would have trouble paying salaries. And, ha. Huh, yeah, now this slide is really wrong. I don't like saying which position we are in in the score list of the day. We are in the top 10, and we've been reliably in the top 10 for the past four uh, uh, releases of OpenStack. Number four was reached temporarily once during the previous cycle, so I don't like this number. Forget, forgive me about not fixing that before doing this presentation. So Innovance <coughs> does two things. We help people build a cloud whether you wanted to do internal uh, workloads or to provide resources to external customer. And we help people use a cloud. And that is not limited to OpenStack. We can help people deploy their application and maintain and operate their application for them on various uh, clouds. Currently, we support any OpenStack uh, clouds that includes the a French provider called CloudWatt, but that would work as well on HP Cloud, Rackspace, etc. Uh, we also do, uh, do Amazon Web Services and Google. Enough for the corporate presentation. As I told you, uh, I think it's much more fun to talk about how we deliver uh, clouds. So to, to start this, we need to set up the, the field. OpenStack, deployed and producing any value for anyone, represent more than 40 components that you need to align so that they fall into working. Um, if you add to that all the other components that are needed to instrument OpenStack, whether it is underneath things like storage, things like, uh, I don't know, hypervisors or things like uh, network equipment and network software and stuff that you put on top. Stuff like, oh, maybe I need a little application to do a self-registration uh, um, portal or maybe I need a little something to provide a software catalog. Well, the number of components is huge. If you deliver something like this, this is a slide for our reference architecture. Uh, for uh, service provider component. So as you can see, we add to OpenStack quite a few things like uh, billing, capacity planning, 
graphing, monitoring, uh, BI tools, integration with CRM, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. or whether you're looking at other use cases like uh, building HPC or building a cloud for a single application or test and dev cloud. Well, there, there are many, many use cases in which you can use OpenStack. But in all these cases, you're just growing on top of this 40 component that needs to be delivered for your solution to be working. So in general, when you get an OpenStack distribution, you will get this. You will get access to technical support. This is great. And you will get access to maintenance, updates of packages. You have a question? Uh, just curious with support. Uh, sometimes installing OpenStack and getting things working, especially on a large scale, can be very confusing and can lead to a bazillion, zillion questions. So is it somebody has a support contract and then they can ask as many questions as they want? Or is it charging per hour or per question? And does that work out? So right now I was talking about the general benefits of technical support and maintenance. Uh, the way we do support at Innovance is we offer uh, a contract which is only limited by the time of response, not in the number of questions or not in the duration it takes to solve a problem. So basically it's a flat fee uh, that is based not on uh, the number of questions, but is based on the number of servers or other parameters that may fit better your business case. I guess what it, leads, what it really leads to is if there's a customer that's running a fairly large scale crowd cloud, you don't end up getting barraged with so many questions that it's impossible. It works out. So we, we don't sell this without selling the consulting services to help you deploy your cloud. So in general, we answer all these questions as part of the engagement. And what we do in terms of technical support is more concentrating on the break fix uh, issues that you may have once we've, we've trained you on how to use your cloud. So, in general, a subscription is just maintenance, access to updated packages, and technical support. But this leaves open a few questions. How do you safely upgrade your environment? How do you know in advance what is going to be the impact of this upgrade? And if the best upgrade course is to, is to reap and replace everything, this is not going to work. Of course, you could say, hey, I'm going to stay on my version of the cloud. It's working. I won't touch it anymore. I'm going to do like I was doing with all my software for ages. I'll leave the same version of the software running for five years. This is how I get the best bang for my buck. Unfortunately, cloud is not really a standard uh, application for many reasons. There is the risk of not staying up to date. OpenStack is a piece of software that is being used by people to get to the very heart of your data center. Actually, you're selling pieces of your data center, so it's the actual purpose of the cloud to give root access to people you don't really know. Whether they are your internal customer or your uh, external customers, these people could be malicious. And yet, you need to provide them access to the heart of your data center. So, of course, there is a few security measures here and there. But <clears throat> the cost of not maintaining up to the latest security update your cloud environment is very high, potentially. So you, that's one very important reason why you don't want to stay with the same version forever. And when we say up to date, what does it mean? I mean, when we are considering that the stable release of OpenStack lasts for, according to Upstream, a year, can you afford not making major upgrades? I don't think so. So we found out that 
Within the OpenStack project, there is a great tool that is being used every day by the developer, which is the CI. The CI that is based on Jenkins and validates every patch before it is merged to uh, the actual branch of OpenStack. And we found out that maybe the best way for you to be maintaining your cloud would be to set up a child CI of this CI that would be able to reproduce the tests that OpenStack does using your specific configuration with additional tests that you would provide that would match your use cases. Something like this. So what I'm talking about here is a chaining of the OpenStack CI to Innovance as a CI so that we can internally validate that what is being done upstream is not breaking what we've delivered downstream to our customers and then have customer a customer specific CI on site as a customer reproducing again maybe with additional sets of tests the tests that OpenStack has done that we've enriched through our knowledge during our engagement with you and link to the CI that you use and this I mean, of course, it's never foolproof. What we are going to achieve with that is give you, we hope, a high enough level of confidence on whether the updates that you just received is not going to break what is in production. Enough confidence so that you will push the button easily to deploy the updates knowing that it shouldn't break things. This is nice, but sometimes we miss. I mean, with the best will of the world, the test coverage of OpenStack is not yet at 100% for itself. And when we are talking about your project, you've, you, you've been adding in your project generally multiple components, multiple modifications or configuration options that are specific to you which may or may not be tested as part of the OpenStack environment. So we are going to be adding our own use cases in the form of tests into the CI to enrich that. But sometimes problems fall through. So the other thing that we need is provide you with the ability to do a progressive rolling update and the ability to roll back if something bad happens, you need to be able to go back to the previous state, right? So what is exactly that we test? So we divided our tests into multiple levels of tests. First of all, we want to test the packages, whether we are getting the packages from uh, another trusted source like uh, Red Hat or Debian, or whether we are building the packages uh, for you, we still need to make sure that the packages themselves are providing the requested service without breaking the environment. So that's the very first level of test that we do. We take the upstream source, which we combine with the package source. We may add a few cherry-picked uh, fixes that we found to be useful here and there. Hopefully, there is as few as possible in there. And we are going to be retesting the whole uh, packages independently. And once, we do, once we're done with the test, then we publish that in an internal repository, which, oops, only one slide, please, is then one of the sources for what we call our product CI. The product CI combines the packages with everything that we have developed to deploy OpenStack, which include uh, Puppet 
modules, puppet manifest, the binary packages we just produced earlier, eDeploy roles, eDeploy is our deployment servers. Um, you, you can find a lot more about eDeploy uh, on our tech blog. And we build, we actually deploy a small cloud. And we have various scenarios depending on what type of deployment you have, we are going to be reproducing in a smaller scale on VMs a similar environment to the one that is running uh, in production in your enterprise. And we are not only going to be testing that what has just been delivered works, we are also going to be testing one thing that we include within our uh, elements, which is how to upgrade. And we want to make sure that the upgrade doesn't create an interruption of service. And we want to check that the service after uh, the upgrade is functionally the same or better than the one before. And we want to make sure that the applications, the key applications that are running on your cloud, if we've identified them and written um, test cases for that, are still performing as expected. Because it's not only a matter of, avail of availability, but it's also a matter of performance. Yes? Uh, all of this makes sense and, and is clear and cool. Uh, Rackspace supposedly does every two weeks they try and stay close to Trump by every two weeks roughly. I have a hard time imagining something. I mean, I can picture like if you have a few servers being able to like upgrade and then said, oops, there was a problem and then rolling back. Do you have any idea if like things even at a scale of rack space, if, the, if it turned out that they put out the wrong thing and had to roll, can, can, can things roll back at that level? Do they need to like have double the art, double the Generally, you, want to, you, you don't want to upgrade all your servers at once because just for one thing, sometimes you need to reboot a server. So you will need to migrate the, the VMs that are running on the server prior to rebooting it. And you don't want to reboot all your servers at once, otherwise you won't know where to put your VMs. So generally what you do is um, uh, upgrade a rack, then a Nile, yes. and validate that it all works. And if it, if it works well, then you, you'll go for a few more and you'll test again. You don't want to do a, a big man upgrade to realize, oops, that was the wrong one. That's not the way to go. Thank you. That makes a lot more sense. Now, a, a little difference, because you mentioned Rackspace. We don't run off trunk. We decided to stay on stable and provide <laughs> updates as they are uh, provided to uh, stable and provide upgrade once a new stable release has been uh, produced. We have never seen a case where our customer was in such a hurry that we needed to run from trunk. And the hassle of running from trunk is not negligible. I mean, I can understand when your business is to be delivering a public cloud that you have tons of engineers ready to support that. And that's OK. But most of our customers don't have that. So we'd rather stay on, uh, on stable. How often are stable releases? Every six months. But then um, you've got uh, in, uh, minor releases within the cycle um, every two months. So, uh, for example, we just released uh, Ice House, and there will be Ice House dot one uh, and dot two dot three. Okay. So, <clears throat> once we've done the, the, the test and the product, then we are going to be archiving the result because we want eventually to be able to go back to this archive later in time. And the output of that is then to re-inject the result of this test when it's passing, the previous test when it's passing, into a customer-specific CI that is running at Innovance, where this uh, customer-specific CI is going to be even closer to the setup that you have. This is actually going to be the exact, a copy of the exact configuration file, smaller scale. And again, we reproduce this test in something that really, really looks like what you have. And then we link that 
that's exactly when we are sending, when the test passed, then we send that information to the customer. Hey, there is a new update. It has passed all our tests. It is now time for you to perform your own test. And the, the customer has the ability to add its own tests into the CI. Because sometimes there is information that they don't want to share even with us. Because sometimes um, they have lots of development teams that can provide additional tests for the application that are running on top of the cloud. And once this is validated, then the customer has the choice to push the big red button. Yeah, we deliver a big red button. Uh, no, we don't. <laughs> to uh, launch the upgrade into prod. So all this we build using 100 open source, 100 percent open source solution. I mean, the CI is nothing magic. We are we're using what OpenStack Infra is delivering. All the components are uh, open, standard open source component like Jenkins, Zool, and a few others. And this allows us to add the missing link to what subscription should be, which is providing a channel for you to be receiving continuously updates, upgrades in uh, scripts that allows for your cloud to stay alive. You know, there's this saying in uh, the security world that security is not a state, it's a process. Well, OpenSAC is just the same. If I'm asking too many questions, feel free to stop me. Um, so far, your question has been enlightening, so please go ahead. <laughs> um, how can you provide an SLA for somebody else running their own cloud? I mean, does that work? So we don't provide, uh, we cannot provide uh, any kind of SLA for somebody else running the cloud. But there are cases where we are managing the cloud on behalf of the customer. And in this case, we handle the SLA. Thanks. So obviously, oh, question. We have a specific custom, uh, uh, CI for each customer that we have, yes. It doesn't mean that we have a, a set of hardware dedicated per customer. The same set of hardware can be shared between customers. Oh, so, you have the configurations and you so basically, we are, we, we are testing OpenStack on OpenStack. Mm -hmm. So we've got uh, Jenkins instances that pilot a global pool of uh, OpenStack instances on which we deploy OpenStack to do the testing. So, uh, for an already running OpenStack clouds to be upgraded to, let's say, Apache version. So I won't be able to, uh, right now to give you the, the complete detailed answer because it would take a little bit uh, more time than I have. However, all the details of how upgrades are operated is published uh, as part of a blog post that was published Friday, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, provide links to uh, every component that we use to do these deployments. And that integrates uh, as well an Ansible uh, engine that we use in order to do the orchestration of the deployment. Because upgrade scripts are very strong uh, needs for being properly orchestrated. You need to do things in the right order. And uh, configuration management was just not enough to solve that problem. You don't need to uh, have a global maintenance windows where you APIs won't work for um, half an hour. Mm -hmm. Or at least we hope to. And if such thing ever happens, we hope that by running the test beforehand, we should be able to warn you that such uh, a downtime will be needed. But so far, we've never had to do that. Uh, so far, what you have downtime on specific hosts, but since in our reference architecture, 
every um, management uh, server is at least triplicated as three copies. We can upgrade one and then move on to the next. Um, for uh, Nova hosts, it's very simple. We uh, do it by uh, groups of hosts and not all at once so that we can maintain uh, do you service. Do migrates and virtual machines while upgrading some Nova host? Yes. Okay. Every time there is a reboot needed, we will need to do that in order not to interrupt uh, services for the end user. Um, the, the, the toughest part is the database. But um, this is something that has been worked on for at least a year now and for which um, the people within the community have provided some pretty nifty solution uh, that allows to maintain service uh, while the upgrade is being done on another copy of the database. Really cool. So the blog post is on uh, Innovance website? Yes. Thank you. Text dot in, uh, t -e -c -h, uh, at s at innovance.com. .innovance.com. Blog.innovance.work as well. Thanks. Shmuel maintained that blog environment, so he knows it by heart. How often are you doing releases to customers? Sorry? How often are you doing releases to customers? Is it more frequent than just a standard open stack uh, release cycle? Yes, it's a bit more often because um, we, we provide updates as they come to stable. We don't wait for the dot releases. That's correct. And that's, and that's the key. When you've got so many components, you really can't test the component ind independently and hope that everything will work once put together. Integration is more an art than a science <laughs> until you've got such a tool. Actually, yes. Um, <laughs> What's funny, there, there is a company that does exactly that for SAP. SAP is as complex a beast as OpenStack. And uh, integration testing and continuous deployment of SAP is at least as complex as OpenStack. But, but do you feel like as every little installation, as, as the OpenStack components become more standardized and the rate of change slows down, do you feel like there'll come a point where every installation won't be this unique little snowflake? And testing at like your a company like your levels will be sufficient or a permanent new state of affairs or I I'm completely falling in love with this model so uh, I'd like to see it everywhere you know I'm like the guy that uh, has got a hammer and think that everybody is a nail uh, but <laughs> everything is a nail but um, I don't know I, that's my current belief. Maybe ask me the same question in a year from now, maybe I'll have changed. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Do you pay much attention to logging for like all the different customers that you have? Logging, as in? As in, uh, so this test that you run, you know, you can run a bunch of Jenkins tests and everything's good. Uh, do you bother, basically a customer's been running for a while, they have a whole bunch of logs. Based on your reaction, I'm assuming that means you're not you're not you don't take the, you don't dig deep into their logs to see if things if there's problems there or things make sense there beyond the normal tests. Um, the thing is, logs you you'll get logs whether everything goes well or not. <laughs> Detecting a, a real failure is actually much easier if you know what the expectations are from the result of a test sure. than by digging uh, through logs. Logs can be very useful to understand where the problem is coming from. And this is why centralized logging is a key component uh, of uh, uh, real-life uh, OpenStack installation. You don't want to have to chase from controller to controller which one has handled this request and uh, w which is Nova host on which the VM is uh, in the end. And this is why uh, one of the 
features, I could say, of our um, installation and upgrade methodology is to stop as soon as a problem is detect detected so that you don't have to parse through hundreds of kilometers of logs um, before you find the line that you need. Um, but still, sometimes debugging can be a little complex and centralized logging really helps in that case. What do you mean stop as soon as a problem is found? Do you mean in a production environment? No, in the testing. Right, okay, thank you, that makes perfect sense. In the testing, you want to interrupt your, your process yeah. so that you can look, fix, and resume from there. You're welcome. So, sorry. A centralized logging, there isn't a really good... I'll let you keep going. I'm asking. No, it's okay. Yeah, I was just checking how much time I still had. Okay. So, uh, I still so have 10 minutes, so we are fine. I think that's about the last slide. I believe there's not a great centralized <laughs> logging solution for OpenStack currently. Um, do you guys do something for that? Or no, we, we didn't invent anything, and there, there's plenty of great things for that. Um, okay. The log stash, uh, yeah. it's pretty nice, and uh, then you can plug in whatever search uh, um, yeah. tool you want, and okay. you know Thanks. there are plenty of uh, very cool way of implementing that uh, on the web, and we didn't reinvent it uh, from scratch. So. Have you ever upgraded to a stable release and had it break something? Uh, every time. <laughs> <laughs> when we start, <laughs> then we fix the script. <laughs> Oh, there's someone over there. Sorry, I have big lights right in front of my eyes, so I may not see you uh, right away. So you mentioned that uh, every time you push an update, the customer can uh, now frame the text, the customer validate the update. Sorry, you're a little too, too far. There's a microphone, if you don't mind, in the middle, and it will have the advantages for other people to hear the question you're asking. So you mentioned that uh, uh, you have a framework where the, the customer can verify uh, a new update in their in their environment. Mm -hmm. So what what is that framework? That's Jenkins. I see. It's I mean again, even though we are absolutely fab fabulous people at Innovance, we love inventing stuff. But when the stuff has already been invented, we reuse what exists. <laughs> So, but J Jenkins lets you run a bunch of jobs, right? So the customers let you define the jobs and, and write their own test cases. Is that correct? Exactly. Okay. The, the, the interest is, the, the, the difference in what we're doing is in the chaining of the CIs. I see. I see. That's the, if there was something unique in this presentation, that's the thing. Right. The rest is standard practice that everybody is implementing. Right. Okay. Thanks. So again, I'm going to ask you to speak in the microphone because my hearing might, might be a little impaired. How you reward from a failed upgrade, especially in customer side? So failed upgrades uh, tend to be stuff where we uh, apply rollback if it's on the production environment. We want to make sure we go back. And in order to do the rollback, uh, e-deploy, um, does something that is very similar to what Triple O will do soon, uh, which is deploy images of the file system and differentiate in, on this image what is data from what is system. So when we roll back, we just push back the old image reusing the exact same data as before. Uh, so we don't need to back up and restore, we just provide the restore immediately. Once this is sorted, then uh, we've got to fix something. And one of the features of this chaining is that when issues are encountered, Innovance is uh, notified. So we can start working on the fix before you can, ca you, you can call us. Does this answer your question? Or did I un understand it correctly? How do we uh, identify the, uh, so do we have, uh, no, we don't, maybe you know. The, the question was, how do you identify what is data from what is system within the images? Uh, it's a non pass So it's a non pass where like convention, where you can put uh, your data in a non pass, or you can define as well in your e-deploy 
image, what where is your data and uh, what you're gonna gain to roll back or so I'm going to repeat in case it was not heard very well. Um, we actually manually specify which are the path where data is being stored. So in eDeploy, we identify precisely, okay, this, this directory and all its child is data and the rest is uh, system. You had a question? Uh, you said that you have like a, a children of the OpenStack CI in your system. How yes. Yeah, exactly. We are cloning from the infra CI. So actually, there, there is two models because we support three distribution, Ubuntu, Debian, and Red Hat. And for Ubuntu and Debian, we pretty much are uh, the upstream for the packages we, we use. So it's very easy. We can do a direct link. For uh, Red Hat, we use what uh, is available in uh, the Red Hat network uh, distribution uh, mechanism. So in that case, we copy the test, but we don't copy the branches. We, uh, we uh, use the packages pro as provided by RHN. Uh, the, yes, we are. OK. Another question. How do you manage security in that environment once you start having knowledge of data versus system? And I mean, I, I see compliance issues starting to pop up all over the place. We, we don't have access to the data at the customer side. It's just strictly knowing where it is and then being OK. OK. And again, we, we know it in a very generic fashion because we are not talking about, uh, I don't know that the credit card information for such and such customer is over there. I know that in general, on my Nova host, data will be stored in those paths. Um, that doesn't mean that I have access to, that, to those hosts. That doesn't mean that I have uh, the ability to uh, identify which data is which uh, on those hosts. Now, the, the big security risk in that model is that if somebody is able to access our uh, publication servers and introduce some malicious code in there, it could propagate to our customer and do uh, some and have some uh, devastating effects. And for this, we reuse a standard practice for packaging, which is to ensure that every time we build something, we uh, uh, produce an uh, MD5 uh, check of it that customer can verify independently so that they know nobody has tampered with what we've built. It's not foolproof, but I mean, that's true to anybody that provides software to you. Any kind of malicious software could be embedded in their software without you knowing it. Uh, the only advantage that you have is you could eventually rebuild everything that we are providing to you from source and hopefully uh, the uh, issue would not be there. Up to the big red button. Uh, there is there is a manual decision. That's the, the CD is only applicable once people have total confidence in the system, and we don't want to replace that confidence by being overly confident ourselves. So we tell them, hey, from our point of view, this is okay. If you feel the same, go ahead and press it. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, uh, the end user benefits, I bet you've read better than me what's on the slide over there since the time I've let this slide uh, happen, so I'm going to skip. Anybody against that? No. Okay, so thank you very much. If you have other questions, I think I'm out of time, but we can talk about it uh, later on. Thank you so much.